social insurance, social security. Can a Christian be involved in this? In good faith, can he be a social security or a social insurance participant? Well, I'm going to take you to the scriptures because we want to always go here first. Maybe the dictionaries, which should be able to bring us to a clarity on the words. And then we go into the law books. What are the laws of the participants Tell us. The laws of nations set out their rules of what goes on with those that are participants. So we're going to go into that idea of what is social. Because that's a very important word. Now if I go to scripture, James chapter 4. And I'm reading out of the King James Bible just so we know. So James chapter 4. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Okay. Now let's look at the idea and the concept of social insurance. When I join into something, it's a pool. An insurance policy is a pool. I'm involved with others. I'm not by myself. I'm in with others in the risk because I participate in something that's beyond just myself individually. So in the pool, under the word social, Webster's Dictionary defines social as pertaining to society, relating to a man living in society, or to the public as an aggregate body. Well, the public is the part of the tax. That's not you. That's you participating in common with something which is not completely yours, what you share. Ready to mix in friendly relationships. Hmm, so there's friendship involved in there. Now, are there people involved in the social insurance program who do not believe in Jesus Christ? Hmm, good question now. Can I be involved in a friendship relationship with people that are not believers in Jesus Christ? Not according to the Holy Bible. Okay, so back to the scripture. We'll read it again. I want to see if there's any clauses with the what ifs and the buts and the yeah buts. Because we know that most religious leaders are going to come up with a lot of yeah buts on this one. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoso the Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Was the nation of Israel ever a world power? They were a nation under God, but were they ever a world power? So they weren't of the world then. They were no part of the world. They were never listed as one of those world powers. World, in its sense, dealing with secular, secular meaning godless, is very clear in this scripture of what a position should be for a Christian. What is the position of a Christian? Well, if you're going to be a friend of God, you can't be a friend of the world. What would be the opposite to being a not a friend of the world then? Would you be an enemy? Could it be possibly you're an enemy alien to the world? So what is a Christian then? Well, the closest I could see from Scripture is you'd be an enemy alien. You could not give up your belief because it's inconvenient for the aggregate. Most people don't realize that even in charity law, if someone registers a charity, especially a religious charity, and the masses or the public interest, the tax interest where all the money comes from to support that religion. Its doctrine becomes contrary to the mass or the mob 
that operates in the aggregate, they have to give up their religious doctrine. They'd have to surrender it, which means all their property, all the bank accounts, all the things they have. Because if they don't, then they'd have to agree and modify their religious doctrine and belief to conform to the aggregate or the world that they're receiving their funding from. Because they're receiving their funding through exemption from the state on what would normally be taxable under state jurisdiction. Do not confuse that with what is church or property belonging to Christ. Church property is exempt. State mixture with church has its own rules. So remember, the religions that are out there today, whether it be Muslim or claiming to be Christian, are state conceptual religions. They have nothing to do with Christ. Christ does not need to register his property. God doesn't need to register as the creator what is his own. So there's two things going on in mixture and confusion. And the confusion is that people who believe that they have a Christian religion registered in order to have state-exempt taxation relief have to realize that has nothing to do with Christ. That is a state concept of allowing someone who operates under state jurisdiction to believe and operate what is thought to be a Christian faith. It's the same thing we talk about individual or private, separate from public. You are no longer individual when you're part of the public. So it's going to lead to our next video that's going to discuss what do I do next then? How am I going to operate? How am I going to basically function in the society of men?